Hey guys, Mike Donahue here from Fire Engineering. This is part two of the video that's going to complement the article you just read. This is going to cover the load transfers. We talked about a crib stack, the little drill with the pencil. Well, here it is. In the video, we're going to use this pipe. My hand represents a load. This is the vertical upright I want to transfer that load through to the ground. You'll see it's perfectly plumb, which tells me or which allows me to transfer this load from point A to point B in a straight manner, disperse them to the ground, success. Now we'll take the same upright, let's rack it like this a bit. Now I'm going to hold this level up like this, which will represent plumb. Now you can see we have this triangle void. So now when a load hits the top here, where's it going to go? Correct. It's going to hit this void, it's going to kick this out, and you have big problems. So that's why when we're doing crib stacks, when we're building shoring systems, everything has to be plumb. So if you look at this basic crib stack, we've used a thousand times, each intersection portion of the crib stack here is called the contact point. That's where it gets its strength from. So now if I apply a load to the top, the load is caught at the top and transferred down through the contact point. So you can see they all line up. You set to see a straight black line. So now if I move this 4x4 over and this load came down, the load's still being captured by these top two 4x4s. But where's that load going? Yes, to a void, straight in the middle. So the rating you had previously on that crib stack is now void because your contact points are not lining up. So remember, from point A to point B, straight and solid. Pretty simple, right? I said so in the article. I'm showing it here because it is. A lot of it is just common sense, and I hope to show you that with future topics. So come back next month for a new article, a new video. Until then, stay safe, stay progressive, and keep training.